In this episode of the Data Career Podcast, I'm going to walk you through my roadmap to help you land your first data job. I'm gonna tell you what skills you need to know and what other two things that you can do to actually land that job, even if you have no prior experience. This is the Data Career Podcast, episode 48. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. Could you give me a roadmap to land my first data job? I get that question quite a bit, and it's a question that I love, and it's a question that I hate. And in this episode, I'll explain why I love it, I'll explain why I hate it, and I'll also give you the answer to what is your roadmap to landing your first data job. So first off, I get this question all the time, like five times a day in my LinkedIn inbox, and it's really hard to answer because everyone is in such a different circumstance. If you think about what a roadmap actually is, like what it means in like terms of like actually having a roadmap, like in terms of navigation, you always have, you know, your beginning point and then your end point, right? Your origination station and then your destination. And the hard thing is, is we're all different. I mean, that's the beauty of life, right? But we all have different backgrounds and we're all starting from different places. For example, I was in college when I started my, my data career. I was really interested in data, but I was in college. And that might be a different roadmap than someone who's starting their data journey when they're 55 years old. They have a lot more experience, a lot less of their career ahead of them. And so the steps that they might take to land the data job might have been different than the steps that I took. And they might want to end up in a different situation or you might want to end up in a different situation. For example, some of you guys might just be like, oh, I really want to be you know, a Tableau dashboard maker and you, I'm going to love that career. And some of you guys are going to be like, that would be so boring. I want to be a senior machine learning engineer for Facebook or something like that. And the destinations are going to affect how your roadmap is and how you actually get from your point A, where you're at right now, to your point B, your destination. And so it's really hard to give general advice when everyone's backgrounds and starting points is so different and their angles are so different. So it's a really hard question to actually answer, especially when you're trying to you know, talk to multiple people at once because everyone's starting from a different place. I help a lot of teachers. You know, Being in a teacher position, making $40,000 a year in the United States and having to be in the classroom for 10 hours a day is a lot different of a position to start from than someone who's working remotely at $90,000 as an environmental engineer. You know, the teacher would be stoked to get to $65,000 and, you know, three days in the office, for example, in that type of hybrid role. When the engineer who might be already remote, already making more money, might not be as interested in that roadmap. And so you'll have to take different steps to get to different places. And there's lots of different ways to get there as well. Like there's not just one way to become a machine learning engineer or to become a data scientist or to become a data analyst. There's lots of different options and it depends on how long you want it to take and how much money you want it to cost and what you want to do along the way, what you're willing to give up and what you're willing to you know, invest. It really depends. So it's a really difficult question to answer. But if I'm going to give you general advice, this is what it would be, okay? You have to focus on the SPN method. All of your data career search is going to be part of the SPN method. Now, if you've never heard of the SPN method, I have a whole hour long webinar. You can find the link in the description down below that you can sign up for and I'll explain everything more in detail than this podcast is going to be. But this is the roadmap that I would tell you to land your data job, okay? So to land your data job, here's what you need to do. One, you need to learn the skills, the right skills, not too much of the skills, just the right amount of the skills. Two, build a portfolio project that showcases everything you know and that you've done with your data skills. And three, build your network so that way you have opportunities that can land in your lap. Instead of you applying to jobs, jobs can start applying to you. So let's, let's dive into that a little bit more and understand what each one of those different steps would entail. So if you're trying to land your first data job, for the majority of you guys, I think you should learn three skills first. The first one is data analysis with Excel. The second one is data visualization with Tableau. And the third one is data wrangling with SQL. Those are the first three things that I would learn if I was starting my first data job. Now, what do I mean by those? In Excel, you have to be able to know how to do data analysis. You're gonna know the majority of it, all right? So you guys are gonna be like, oh, I've used Excel, but just make sure you know how to do correlations in Excel. Make sure you know how to make a graph in Excel. Make sure you know how to do aggregation calculations like the min, the max, the average, standard deviation, those types of things inside of Excel. Now, I'm not saying you have to master Excel, 
but just make sure you feel comfortable analyzing data inside of that environment. The next thing, once you feel comfortable with Excel, I think you should go to Tableau and start learning data visualization. The cool thing about data visualization is it takes a swarm of numbers, just like a sea of numbers, and turns it into something meaningful, which is really important for businesses and would make you really valuable. So what do I mean by that? If you think about a human brain, we can only remember so many numbers at once. We're actually, like our brains are not that good at computing numbers. If I told you what's four plus seven divided by four times 12, you're not gonna be able to pull that off, but a computer could pull that off. Computer's really good at number calculations, humans not so much. We're not even very good at remembering numbers. If I told you, you know, a digit 801, 722, 4321, like, Okay, the ending with there was a little easy because I made that up, but you're not gonna be able to remember phone numbers right off the bat. And some of you guys are like, yeah, I'm really good at that. If I add you know, four more digits to the phone number, it gets a little bit harder and so on and so forth. We're actually not that good at remembering things, but we are really good at seeing things. That's one of the best things, our human skills, we're able to see and connect that to our brain. And so that's what data visualization does is it takes a swarm of numbers and puts it into something that our brain can understand. And that is a very valuable skill to have. And Tableau is one of the funnest and easiest ways to do that. So I would do data visualization inside of Tableau. Now, why Tableau over Power BI? I get that question asked quite a bit. And the answer is kind of no reason. If you wanna do Power BI, you can instead. But for the majority of you guys, Tableau is going to be easier to get because you do not need any sort of business email, which sometimes you do with Power BI. And also, Power BI does not really run easily on Mac. So in my opinion, I think I would go to Tableau. It's also listed in more job descriptions than Power BI, so there's really no reason to learn Power BI over Tableau. And if you've learned one, you'll learn the other. Tableau and Power BI are very similar. And if you know Power BI, then you'll know Tableau. And if you know Tableau, you'll know Power BI. It's not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio of like how they work, but you'll be able to figure them out. They're all very like click and play, drag and drop. There's no actual like really hard things. If you've figured out how to use a PowerPoint before, you'll be able to figure out how to use Tableau and Power BI. They're very fun. So do not be worried by them. You, you'll be excited about them. Now moving up to SQL, because that is the third skill I typically recommend that most people should have in their roadmap. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And it is that. It is a language. So it is a step up from Excel. It is a step up from Tableau. You're no longer in that you know kind of safe environment of the Tableau software or the Microsoft Excel software. You're in this whole different language world. And there's lots of different things. It, you know, SQL can be really simple or really complicated. And so this is why I typically recommend it to learn it third, because you're going to have a little bit of a higher learning curve than you would Excel and Tableau. But hopefully you've built up the momentum. You're feeling good. You figured out Excel. You figured out Tableau, and then it's time to uh, move to SQL. SQL is really powerful and it can be a superhero. It allows you to analyze big data sets quite easily. So you can, for instance, find the average of a column. Now you could do that in Excel as well, but when the data gets really big, SQL becomes faster. It also, if you get too big in Excel, Excel can't open. So that's rough, right? So SQL is good for big data and also good at combining multiple data sets into kind of like one data set. But SQL is really powerful and it is the most popular listed job in data analytics roles. And it's used by data analysts, data scientists, data engineers. It is one of the best things that you could learn in your data journey and you will never regret learning it. So that's my typical recommendation. For you learning skills to land a data job, you need to know Excel, you need to know Tableau, you need to know SQL. Once you've learned those three things, you can stop. And I don't actually mean that, like you're always going to be learning in your data career, but if you're okay at SQL, you're okay at Tableau, if you're okay at Excel, it's time to let the market tell you what to do next. You know, people like me can say, this is what you should learn next, or that's what you learn next. But it really doesn't matter. What matters is the market. And what I mean by that is someone in an interview process saying that you don't have enough experience with SQL. Okay, then I should go learn more SQL. I should practice more SQL. But if you're like, oh, uh, I don't know, like it says SQL, I'm okay at SQL, but I don't even know if I'm good enough at SQL, so I'm not going to apply. No, you have to stop doing that. That is a toxic trait to have in your job search. You are rejecting yourself before you let anyone else do it. Don't do that. Don't reject yourself from jobs. Try to apply to a couple jobs that have requirements of Excel, SQL, Tableau, whatever, right? And see if, see if you get the interview. So many people are like, oh, I'm not getting interviews, so I'm going to go take this SQL course from Coursera. What is that SQL course from Coursera going to do? It's going to be one more course on your resume. 
Like, how does that actually change the game? How does that change your career? How does that change your life? Now, if you're in a sequel or if you're in an interview and there's like a sequel test and you failed the sequel test, then yeah, it's time to go take a sequel course from Coursera or do something to get better at sequel practice more. But if you're just taking another course from Udemy that you're like going to do half the time, like don't do it. It's very rare that taking another course, that taking one course is going to change your data career, especially with this skill. Oh, like I took this Excel course and I landed my job. No, that's not the stories you hear. The stories you hear are going to come from the next two parts of the SPN method. And that is the personal projects and the network. So I'm going to touch on those here. But just to summarize this, Excel, Tableau, SQL, in that order, ignore everything else. Those are the things you need to land your first data job. Okay. On top of those, you need portfolio projects. These are the evidence that you can actually do what your resume says you can do. Cause I could say, Hey, I can, you know, fly a hundred feet in the air. And what would you say? Prove it. If I can't prove it, then why would you ever trust me? And so projects are the cheat code to giving the hiring manager, to giving the recruiter, to giving that company trust that you actually are cool, that you actually have the skills that you've developed. If you don't have the portfolio projects, how are they supposed to trust you? You know, resumes, talk, projects, walk. You need to have projects so that you can show them what you're made out of. And also projects being confidence to you. Like you might think, oh, I'm not that good at SQL, but then you actually use it in a project in an applied setting outside of one of those dumb online bot systems that do everything for you. And you're just kind of like, blah, blah, blah. Like you actually do a project that's going to give you confidence. Oh my gosh, I can actually do this. Projects give you confidence that you can do data analytics. So do more projects. All right. Put them on a portfolio, put that portfolio on your resume, your LinkedIn, your cover letters, your cold messages, put that everywhere, send it to everyone and say, come and see, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian and I'm reading the new Testament this year. And obviously whether you believe in the Bible or Jesus Christ, you have to say that Christ is a figure that was very influential in the world. And one thing that Christ says often in the new Testament is come and see. And that's something that I would invite you guys to also say, come to my portfolio, see the awesome skills I have. I'm awesome. And my portfolio says I'm awesome. The next thing you're going to need in your roadmap to land your first data job is some sort of a network. Okay. You need to be building and growing your network and people discount this a ton, but I'm telling you, it's actually the most important one. So I've thought about, you know, reframing the SPN method as the NPS. Cause I actually think skills matter the least you guys. I actually think it matters the least. I think network is very, very important. And you can check out some episodes that I've had in the podcast recently. So I did an interview with Chris French. who talked about network. Asa Howard also talked about network. Kadisha Bryan also talked about network. These are three data professionals that went from being a teacher to a data analyst, a warehouse worker to a senior data engineer and neurology graduate to a data analyst role. So those are three episodes that you can just listen back on if you scroll down whatever podcast listener you're listening in and you can hear those. There's really good networking advice. You can go through those. But if you want my short advice about how to grow your network, here's how you're going to do it. And to be honest, 90% of you guys are going to ignore this. I promise you. 90% of you guys aren't going to do this. You're going to listen and then you're going to say, oh, okay, I don't really want to do that. And then you're not going to do it. But this is what grows your network. Comment on LinkedIn every day. Comment on someone else's post every day on LinkedIn and make it meaningful. Don't just say, oh, thank you for sharing or wow, very cool. Leave something that's like substantial, like three sentences that adds value. Oh, I tried this and it worked. Here's my results. Or, you know, man, in the past I've done that, but it didn't really work the way I thought it would. This is what happened instead. Or, oh, I found this really cool resource. Check out this free resource. and I'd love to talk to anyone else about it. Leave something meaningful for people to actually look at and then post about your journey twice a week. So a comment every day, post about your journey twice a week, twice a week. We're talking a hundred times a year. You're going to post on LinkedIn what you learned this week. Just say, Hey, I learned about, you know, linear regression today. Here's how it works. Or I was working on SQL today and this is the, the SQL query that I wrote. Pretty cool, huh? Like this is the data set I was doing it on. You have to be posting on LinkedIn to be growing your network and to post on LinkedIn. Just, just answer this one question. What did I learn today? What did I learn this week? Answer that question in a LinkedIn post and you'll start to grow your network. 
you know, how much do you have to grow your network? Some of my students, you know, who have gone through my programs have grown their network from, you know, 200 connections on LinkedIn to 20,000. Do you have to go that much? Definitely not. They're really successful doing it because that's one of the things we teach inside of the data analytics accelerator program. But everyone should be above 500 connections on LinkedIn. Everyone should definitely be above 100 connections on LinkedIn. But once you got 100, the next milestone's 500, the next milestone's 1,000. That's, that's all you, you need. And why do we need to grow our network? Because your network is your net worth. In your data journey, your network is your net worth. It is not what you know, it's who you know. And I would edit that to be, it's who you could know. Because a lot of you guys are like, oh, I don't have a network. I don't know anybody. Well, get knowing somebody, right? The best time to plant a tree was five years ago. The next best time is yesterday or today, <laughs> sorry. So start growing your network today. That is the key, all right? And you might feel weird doing it. You might feel embarrassed doing it. You might be worried doing it. Well, do it and do it embarrassed. Do it scared. One of my favorite students inside of the Data Analytics Accelerator program is Samantha Paul. You guys should definitely check her out on LinkedIn. And I ask her to do stuff all the time. And she's like, I don't want to do that, Avery, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it scared. And that's one of the phrases I've really come to love is I'm going to do it scared. And, you know, post on LinkedIn scared, comment on LinkedIn scared. All right. It's okay to be scared. But let me ask you this. What's the worst thing that could happen? What's the worst per thing that could possibly happen with you commenting and posting on LinkedIn? You say something wrong. Someone thinks you're dumb. People aren't thinking about you. <laughs> People aren't thinking about me. I'm thinking about me. You're thinking about you. They're thinking about them. All right. People are thinking about you way less than you actually think they are. So don't be worried because it is not as bad as you think it is. So try it this week. Try posting twice, commenting every day and growing your network. And that is my roadmap for landing your first data job. The skills, where are they? Excel, Tableau, SQL. Build a project in each one of those. Have an Excel project, have a Tableau project, have a SQL project, put it on a for portfolio and say, hey, come and see world. This is how awesome I am. I have learned the data skills necessary to land my job. And then you'll start to see more traffic. And then build your network. And then all of a sudden you're going to be getting these opportunities where jobs are actually applying to you instead of you applying to jobs. So if you grow your network, if you have a portfolio and you have those three skills, that is enough to land your first data job 90% of the time. There's exceptions. I'm not going to pretend that this is the formula for everyone. There's definitely exceptions, but the majority of you guys, that is the formula and you have to perfect those three things. And if I have to perfect them, I'm going to choose the network, the portfolio, and then the skills. Don't take another Excel class. Don't take another SQL class unless the market says, oh, you're not good enough at Excel. Unless someone says those words or they reject you for not having enough exp tech experience or something like that, don't reject yourself first, all right? So that is my roadmap for you guys. If you want more of all of this roadmap and actually like we're gonna go in an hour session instead of just like this 15 minute session that we did, click the link in the description down below. I do a free webinar where I talk you through the SPN method in detail, give a lot more examples, success stories, stuff like that. It's awesome, go ahead and click that down and I'll give you more advice. Until then, guys, I hope that you're going to follow this roadmap and land your first data job in 2023. I am hoping for you guys. I am praying for you guys. I am team you in this journey. And if there's something I can do to help you on this, please let me know. If you guys enjoyed this episode, will you guys please just really quickly, it'll take you about 30 seconds, go and leave a rating and review. It really helps the podcast grow and it makes me feel good to read them that you guys are actually enjoying this. So I'd really appreciate it and I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one.